page, your introduction. Beautiful. So, oh, Crystal is here. Welcome, Crystal. Yay. Yay. You love listening to Crystal speak. She's amazing. Uh, from the first time I met her, I was so blown away. She's just uh, crazy awesome. So you're welcome. So Crystal Jensen is the CEO and founder of Mindful Expressions, Inc. and the Mindful Educator, association and host of the International Mindful Play Summit. Crystal loves to lead those around her to form a deeper connection within and create safe spaces for growth to happen. Crystal specializes in the implementation and integration of mindfulness practices within early learning environments. Crystal's programs nurture not only children's developing minds, but the parents and educators as well, creating a positive foundation for future growth and turning the craziness into calm, curious play. Crystal is a certified, is certified in MBSR, which is mindfulness-based stress reduction. Fantastic, that's awesome. Through the mindfulness of, mindfulness of Canada and a certified workplace mindfulness facilitator through Mindful Leader. That's a lot of mindful. Yes, it is, isn't it? Mindful words. That's a lot of words in one I, I think you'd be talking about mindfulness, I think. Yes. Crystal completed the mindset training through the Proctor, Ga uh, Proctor Gallagher Institute Thinking into Results program. So I am so excited to hear your presentation today. Yay. So I, I will back out, but I will be monitoring to see if there's comments or questions in the Facebook feed, and I'll just transfer them over to you at the chat so you can take a look. Perfect. But enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't know how long my chat's going to be. So as long as you're on the other end, we'll just go with the flow and see how it how it ends up here. So thank you for the yeah, for the opportunity. Today. So it's all yours, however long you want to chat. And you don't have anybody following you. Perfect. Cool. Enjoy. Thank you. All right, everybody. I am super happy and grateful that you are here with me today. So Please, if you're listening live or you're catching it on the replay, give us a little bit of love, hashtag, re hashtag replay, or give me some hearts because I love some hearts. So today I wanted to come on and talk to you a little bit about my story. And I'm just going to move myself up. There we go. So I'm actually looking at you. And I just wanted to share a little bit about myself. So I am a passionate early childhood educator, and I love what I'm doing each and every day. I run a program called Mindful Expressions, which is a mindfulness early learning center here in Kelowna, BC. And and I support children to support to form that mind body connection through, you know, meditation, mindful daily living, doing some self regulation through breath work, working on some self love activation, some I am statements and moving our body to really support bringing in some of that empowerment for these children at a young age. So I'm very passionate about creating that foundation for the future. And I have this beautiful vision as I'm, you know, working behind the scenes doing, you know, creating summits and running my preschool program or my early learning program, I have this vision of really supporting educators to create that foundation for themselves to sprinkle this love through mindful practices out into the community. So I started to work on my own development and I took my MBSR, which is all about mindful based stress reduction and moving through becoming the certificate or certified workplace mindfulness facilitator. It's a lot of mindful, like Shauna said, but the idea is, is I'm able now to come out into the community. I've partnered with a couple centers here in Kelowna, as well as Childhood Connections to bring some of this work from the center out into supporting other centers, supporting educators to form that deeper connection within and be really sparked up about the work that they're doing in the field. So by combining some mindset work, bringing in some mindful strategies and really allowing us as an educator to see ourselves from a different lens, having that mind body connection and learning from my own experience has allowed me to show up in a calmer manner and be able to support and teach the children around me, but I'm really able to connect with that piece inside of me. So I'm here to share a little bit about my story. And when we talk about, you know, where I was as an educator, when we talk about, you know, the struggles that I had in my world, I was going through some burnout. I recognized that I wasn't really um, responding from the inside out. I was reacting by all of the stimulus that I had around me in my day. 
So what would happen is I would give my all to the children in the center and I would come home and I was sputtering. So I was not regulated. It, I was basically turning to some unhealthy habits on the weekend to just regulate my system. And I wasn't really connecting with inside. So I felt like I was just hovering, right? Showing up for work every single day, doing what I needed to do. So when we talk about mind-body connection and learning, there's this beautiful space of understanding that it's not just an extra thing that needs to be done. When we incorporate some mindful practices into our day, it could be as simple as you just recognizing that awareness inside to say, you know what, right now, teacher just needs to sit for a moment and take a deep breath. And by modeling that behavior and the children around us, having that awareness piece, they get to join in. So I'm going to talk about the three steps that I like to follow. A, B, C, go figure, right? So A stands for awareness, right? Creating that space so you can have awareness for yourself, the others around you, and tapping into that, that connection within. So I'll give you an example. During my day, there's beautiful children, energy running around me all the time, and sometimes I just need a break. So I say to the children, children, teacher Crystal's just going to come and sit. Sometimes I just take a seat. Sometimes I starfish on the ground, and they can see me taking this action. So they decide if they want to come and join me. In that moment, my awareness around what myself needs, the self-care that I need, I'm honoring that inside of me. So I'm laying there, I'm sitting there, and I'm just tapping into my breath and taking a big, deep breath like this. <sighs> and the children around me, they see me modeling the behavior. I've let them know how I'm feeling. So they decide to either join in or not, totally by choice, by invitation only. So as I'm recognizing what's happening inside of me, this awareness that I need to stop, I'm going to go to B, which is breath. Okay, so I have the awareness, A, B is breath. I'm connecting with my breath. Sometimes I do three, sometimes I do four. I mean, you could do box breathing, you could do triangle breathing, you could do four in, six out. The idea is, is whatever you're doing, you're breathing, you're bringing the intentional thought in and you're sitting and you're taking that deep breath. The third is C for crystal or connection. What happens in that moment when you have that awareness, you're connecting with your breath, you're actually connecting your mind and your body. So you're going from doing, 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 doing into just being. For that moment in time, I'm sitting there or I'm laying there starfished, whatever it looks like, and I'm taking in that breath. <sighs> and I'm forming that connection. I'm bringing my mind back to my body because our days are full. There's lots of things going on around us. But when we bring in the ABC method and we enhance our awareness, we bring in our breathing and we form that connection, what happens is it actually forms a wedge with a response. And I'll give you this example. Here's a stimulus. It's really prickly and pokey, right? And then you've got your reaction. If there's no wedge in between, these are all pokey things. I hope you love my analogy because I like to talk with my hands. There's going to cause some friction, right? But by bringing in the ABC or a mindful technique, we're creating a wedge. So we still have a stimulus. Then we have a wedge in between to then respond. So things might still be happening around us. Our day might be full, but we're taking these little bite-sized moments to ABC, inject the awareness, the breath, and the connection, which helps our system slow down. It helps our system say, well, wait a second. Now the same stimulus that's really prickly and pokey, I now have this wedge of beautiful time before I give out a response. And the more we start connecting in our learning each and every day, and there's different practices that I like to teach is we have a better uh, way to respond and, and work from the inside out versus letting these stimuluses happen to us and just triggering into more of a reaction. So my biggest goals and aspirations is to support educators, to support parents, bringing in these techniques into their home so that it's not just something that I'm teaching within the center, that now I can come out into the community and support, support educators, support centers that want to integrate some of these practices into their everyday and empower these educators to see themselves in a different light. So the other piece, the mindset, is that I'm recognizing that educators in 
including myself in the field, there's this perception that we're babysitters, right? If you're in the early learning field, which I teach zero to five, there's this overall perception that you're not a teacher, you're a babysitter. And every year that you work into this field, there's this desire of why you got into this field to begin with. But when you have external things coming in and you have this perception, you know, we are really reshaping how educators see themselves. So I created a little script called the next generation educator. And this script is all around embodying that I am strong. I am brave. I am here for a greater purpose. I am regulated. And it's such a beautiful expression to listen to, because as I know from coming from being in a burnt out state, recognizing what's happening out there in our industry right now, where we don't have enough teachers to fill the spaces for the enough children that need care. So it's a real pandemic in our industry right now. And what, what I'm finding is that these educators are feeling undervalued. These educators are feeling unheard. These educators are completely burnt out. And if you're listening and you can resonate with this, you know, if you're a parent, I absolutely hear you and see you. So my biggest um, why and what I get fired up is it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way that we can reshape the way that we experience our childhood, that our children experience our childhood, that these educators and parents experience how they move through parenting from more of a, I would say, more of a conscious parenting approach. So that's kind of what I'm here to talk about is that mind body connection and learning recognizing that when we take those mini moments for ourselves and the children can join us and integrating some little techniques throughout our day to support us moving through connecting with ourselves we then show up to be that better version of ourselves for those around us you know maybe it could relate to a story where you see maybe you've had your child in daycare or you're just having a grumpy mommy day or a grumpy daddy day and all of a sudden you react a certain way. Well, that programming for your child or for the children that are around you from zero to five sticks with them. So we all have this habitual pattern, this belief system, these programs from our upbringing, genetics, environment, you name it, but we have an opportunity to shape shift the way that the next generation comes together in learning, teaching them how to breathe at a young age, teaching them how to express their emotions, the social and emotional learning piece of it, teaching them to, to be empowered with their voice, to stand in the mirror and do some self-image and look at themselves. And I'm telling you, when you're doing this work with your children or with the children that you support, you are also healing your own inner child. That, that person, that, that child inside of you that wants to be seen, that wants to be heard, that just wants to show up and talk about what's going on inside. So it's this generation of healing that happens naturally while we implement these strategies. So, you know, since our last talk, and, and if you've listened to me talk before, things have really shifted in my world where I'm not just running the center or, you know, in part of my mindful play community, I was coming on and doing circle magic for, for children. I'm now stepping out, getting into the community, bringing this program to life. And I'm calling on educators, educators that are looking to form that deeper connection to really stand in that space of recognizing their own self. What are the needs and wants inside? What are the thoughts coming forward? How do you view yourself as an educator? educator, right? Sitting in silence, doing some visioneering, creating that fire that's inside that's already there. Maybe the flame has just been dimmed a bit because you're just burnt out, right? Maybe you just want to do certain things, but it's like, but how? Or maybe you want to play with your puppets and do your thing, but there's that chatter that happens inside that just says, well, are people going to look at me playing with my puppets, right? I've been there. I've absolutely been there. So if there's anything you can take from my talk today is the importance of forming that mind-body connection for yourself. If you do the self-care piece or however your routine looks like for you, if you can incorporate a little ABC or a snack into your day that just tends to regulating your own emotions and forming that connection within, 
I'm promising you everything on the outside that's happening around you will start to become that vibrational match of peace and calm within you. And as we know, as we are, you know, looking at everything around us, that there is that mirror, that reflection that does come back to us. So upcoming event. I have the Mindful Place Summit 2.0 that's happening May the 3rd to the 9th. I'm super excited for it. We have a beautiful lineup of speakers and we will be sharing that. Um, you can come and join me in the Mindful Play community if you wanted to come over. It's a free Facebook group and that's where I am uh, going to be bringing in a lot of the recaps for the speakers for this time around. We're going to have some giveaways, some really fun stuff um, and um, just wanted to talk about that because stress and anxiety is our main focus for speaking on this uh, this next summit. And when we're moving through this world that we're in right now, there's a lot of unknowns. And when children or adults feel unknown, unknown and, and unsettled, that's when a lot of this uh, anxiety can come through. So our speakers are focused on everything from music to yoga, to holistic approach, to traditional approaches. And it's going to be uh, a a beautiful event. And for those of you that took part in our last event in September, we've made some tweaks and changes. So we're really excited to bring in a little bit more energy throughout the event during the Facebook doing some live draws. Um, and I'm also opening up in June, uh, a few spots for my one on one mentorship program. And that is for specific for educators or parents that are looking to form that deeper connection that are looking to bring in more calm, curious approach, more conscious parenting, but it's more of an integration piece because if we work through a workshop series or we work through some training, and we take that we learn it, we put it on the shelf. I know from my own experience that does no good. So I want to encourage you to look at that piece and say, okay, I would love to look at integrating these pieces into my each and every day. So it helps me create that calm, curious play, even for myself or the children around me that I'm supporting. So I'll be sharing some more information about that, but I wanted to say it on here because it's something very close and dear to my heart. I've been working very hard at putting together uh, something with ease and flow, of course, um, for those that are coming and looking for that deeper connection and bringing in those ABCs into their center to support the children and their educators or themselves as a parent to, to regulate. Um, so I just wanted to also thank Shauna. I, Shauna, you are incredible. You absolutely put on these amazing events and you get me out of my comfort zone and get me up swinging. So I absolutely love and adore um, all the work and hard work that you've been putting in. So I wanted to share my appreciation there. And that's it for me. I don't know how long I've been talking, but um, I definitely, whenever I'm, I'm talking, I'm waving my hands. And Shauna, if you want to come on back. I'm coming on back. How, I'm like... I don't even know how long, but it felt really good. <laughs> it did feel good. It was great. Thank I always love listening to you talk. You just inspire everybody to really think about how they communicate with kids differently and each other. Yeah, and I, I appreciate you. You know, it's I'm I'm shape shifting over here. I'm moving and flowing, and you know, things right. are things are just high vibe. And I'm super grateful to be able to share this and to be able to say, you know, hey, educators, if you want to make a change, let me know because I'm so passionate about seeing the change within inside of me, where I'm no longer a grumpy mummy. Right? I wake up each and every day. I mean, we've been closed for two weeks, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready, I'm re ready for the children to come back and Aww. creating that balance to ensure that I'm feeling well supported um, in my own daily practice. When the children aren't here, I have to step up my game to make sure I'm doing the do because I'm always doing it when I'm with them. So I have to kind of re, uh, realign my days when I'm not teaching. Self-care is so important. I do like the analogy in the airplane, you put oxygen masks on first or you're not as helpful for everybody, right? So. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you for having me on. I've really enjoyed it and I can't wait to go back. I've been kind of popping in and out and watching. So I can't oh, wait cool. to go back and uh, finish watching the rest of all the speakers, amazing speakers today. So. All of you guys are fantastic and just pass along the most wonderful gems and awesomeness. And I so appreciate your crystal. I think you're I just appreciate a you too. huge bright light in our community that's trying to make a change in so many people's lives and stuff so hang in there keep going don't change 
Awesome. <laughs> Have a fabulous yeah. weekend. And Thank I shared, you. Yes. I Crystal's uh, website and, inf and information below so you can check it out for more information and stuff. And I don't know, she'd be thrilled to hear from you and stuff. So absolutely reach out anytime. And Shauna, thank you again. I really appreciate you. For sure. And for you, those of you on Facebook, we start again tomorrow at 10. So hopefully you can join us in to listen to the, the next series of speakers. It's just going to be just a well-being weekend. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Shauna. Bye.